Hello and welcome to Free Thought Forum. This is a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I'm Larry Rhodes. And I'm Faithless Forrest, and we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you're not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find free-thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and for people committed to life rooted in science and free of supernatural beliefs. On today's show, we will be discussing the question, what is so wrong with the religion anyway? Even though we didn't get it put on the on the screen. Oh, I got it wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm in charge of misspelling. Week, I think. <laughs> what is so wrong anyway, with the religion anyway? But first, we want to tell you a little bit about the sponsors of our show. The Atheist Society of Knoxville frequently has a fun meetup at a bar or eatery. Tonight's meetup is at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in the Old City. Starts around eight. Um, sorry, five thirty. Look for the silver jacketed copy of The God Delusion standing upright on the table. As Matt Dillahunty of the Atheist Experience always says, everyone is welcome to our happy hour for food, drink, and conversation. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, for a boke, or punch, please don't. The Rationalists of East Tennessee have several regular monthly meetings. The first and third Sunday mornings of the month are usually lectures and lively roundtable discussions. These happen at the Goins Cafeteria uh, Annex in uh, at the Pellissippi Hardin Valley campus. You can find the exact locations on the rationalist.org website. The second Sunday, we hold the Skeptics Book Club. That happens at the Barnes and Noble on Kingston Pike, not far from um, the West Town Mall. And that's an afternoon thing. We're meeting at two o'clock these days. That's a change. If you're if you used to our, our summer hours, uh, uh, you'll be arriving just as we finish up. On the fourth Sunday, we're mixing it up. Sometimes we have a get-together called a reflections meeting, or sometimes we get together to play board games or similar activities. Later in the show, we'll give you uh, our websites and visit uh, to visit for additional details, including times and locations. Uh, however, I do want to invite callers. The phone lines are open. This is a call-in show, and the number is at the bottom of your screen. That's and right. Now, in the news. All right, well, in the news, the American Family Association, again, is trying to coerce retailers to narrow the holiday season only to Christian holiday expression. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a message for them. No holiday tree for you or your kids. It says so in the Bible. Right, Reverend Rhodes, can you give us a reading? From the first, I'm um, sorry, from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 10, it says, and this is the start of Jeremiah, Hear ye the word which the Lord spaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. I can't help but think when I hear the silver and gold of Burl Ives singing. And mm -hmm. now, of course, you know, th this is the Old Testament we're talking about mm -hmm. here. This is way before Christianity, and here you have the authors, well, the writer Jeremiah in the Old Testament condemning what sure sounds like the holiday practice we have here. And Christianity itself uh, did not, or frowned on bringing a, a tree into the, the house for, for Christmas until, what, the 1600s? Or? Um, uh, oh, well, <clears throat> it would have varied by, by geography. Um, I think, you know, the, the uh, bringing the tree in is a kind of Germanic tradition that um, would have been a pagan, uh, have a continuity from pagan practices in you know uh, northern Europe, uh, you know probably during all of the the, the time Christianity existed. Um, I know that it came to the English-speaking world and in uh, uh, the United Kingdom and the United States during the reign of Queen Victoria. Wow. Um, so in that sense, it's kind of fresh. It's, you know, it's barely 150 years old. But as you were reading, Reverend, as you were reading mm -hmm. that passage, it occurred to me when they were talking about be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. I think they're talking about the solstice mm -hmm. because, you know, that's when the trees come out. And, and so it, it's, it's literally, it's, 
it, it appears to me that it's recognizing the real root of mm -hmm. the holiday season. The real reason for the season. And it's axial I mean, uh, tilt. Orbital <laughs> tilt, yeah. A, a tilt of the orbital mm -hmm. uh, of the axis relative to the orbital plane. Mm -hmm. All right. So no tree for the people of the book. <laughs> okay, we got a, a late arrival here. This just in. In local news, we hear that in response to the establishment of a Christian club at the Lenore City High School, a group of secularly minded students have established a chapter of the Secular Student Alliance there. Given the recent history of the administration of that school, this is a remarkable step for these brave students and faculty sponsors. Really? Well, there are many college chapters of the SSA. This is one of only 28 high school chapters in the country, and presently the only one in Tennessee, uh, according to the SSA website. It only has two years ago, it was only two years ago that when the LCHS, Lenore City High School student, Crystal Myers was not allowed to publish her editorial, No Rights, The Life of an Atheist in the school newspaper by school authorities citing the potential for disruption in the school as the reason. Her editorial, however, was later given national distribution following a special award by the Freedom From Religion Foundation. All righty. Well, so, Larry, so what is wrong with religion anyway? Am I getting that question right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you may well ask your non-believing loved one, uh, what do you have against religion? You might ask, why not just live and let live? I hear that a lot on, on Facebook mm -hmm. from the, the theists. Religion gives so many people hope for the future, and it's not hurting anyone. I, I can't rem help but remember the John Stewart m remark on that. Mm -hmm. Religion, giving people hope in a world torn apart by religion. Yeah. However, uh, these theists do know better, or they wouldn't have started questioning their beliefs. I mean, these atheists know better, or they wouldn't have started questioning their beliefs in the first place, nor would they have bothered to come out of the atheist closet. The main reason that religion is a problem is that it causes great harm the world over and has for millennia. But you want details. Uh, just saying harm isn't enough. No. Be specific. Let's start with the most obvious, uh, physical violence, say slavery, cruelty in the name of religion. Uh, religion is very divisive. It splits all of humanity into warring factions. Religious beliefs were, and, uh, were the cause of and or the justification for the Spanish Inquisition, which was 350 years of torture, blood shell, bloodshed, excuse me, property theft, all in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Crusades was 200 years of holy war. Now, uh, a thing that I learned in high school um, is uh, to view the world and the, the, the time of the Crusades through the perspective of the eyes of the people living in the Middle East, where what you had were, what can only be described as, you know, marauding Christian invaders mm -hmm. that um, came with the, uh, the intent to subjugate at the very best, if not exterminate, um, the people who are living there, and you know, I, I think after the Kill initial, well, after the initial Muslim expansion, it was an area of relative peace because there was a kind of a hegemony of belief. Um, you know, the Islamic world would have been maybe you know still kind of at war around its perimeter, but but there in the central part of the Middle East. Um, yeah, hegemony had been achieved, and so this brought uh, war into the center of what would have been uh, their empire, and and you know, well, m m massive death. You know, the, you hear these stories about um, you know the rivers running red with blood. Uh, so um, you know, when the former president talked about us conducting a crusade, the United States conducting a crusade against terrorism, that's a really ill-chosen word uh, because in the eyes of other parts of the world, um, that, that would be exactly, uh, well, the, the mirror image of that would be for them to say, well, we've come to commit uh, jihad to bring peace to you guys, mm -hmm. too. Right. It, 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 it's, you know, utterly offensive to say, you know, we're going to uh, bring, uh, bring peace by by war, right, and 
after, I mean, Christianity got its big push at, uh, from Constantine converting to Christianity at his deathbed and, and to bring hegemony, hegemony to, uh, to Rome, uh, bring a common religion to Rome. And then, of course, when, as Rome expanded, its armies brought Christianity at a point of a sword to all of the uh, surrounding uh, kingdoms and, uh, and states, European states. Yeah, the uh, convert or die was, uh, you know, a real problem. And, you know, oh, my goodness, we, we've heard modern Americans say that. Um, my goodness, wasn't it that Duck Dynasty guy saying, well, they should all either convert or be killed? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's a terrible thing when you know, people of faith think that they have the right to say something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the second, of course, great expansion was like the, the expansion of the British Empire, which took over most of the known world uh, at that point. And it, they pushed their Christianity on everybody, too, when they brought it. Um, a point that was uh, made when I was in school is that, in a sense, the Spaniards were first. The Spaniards, you know, Christopher, they funded Christopher Columbus. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was actually Portuguese, but they funded Christopher Columbus, who's the first European to, you know, go across the center of the Atlantic and set foot in the New World. He's the first to take prisoners back, slaves. But they also made the point that the Spanish were the first then to send missionaries to try and bring the heathen to, to, uh, to save them. Mm -hmm. And if we look at that as, give it the most charitable interpretation we can, that they're trying to save people, well, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and they were the first to feel sort of guilty about the, the massacres they had done. Um, uh, and that's why in much of Latin America, you see a higher percentage of population of Native American uh, ethnicity surviving. Uh, here in North America, um, you know, extermination was more the rule. Yeah. Uh, this also see why 95% of Central and South America are, are Catholic. Um, uh, it would be the legacy, day, the, of the, the legacy of the Spanish, Spanish. influence. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, but when you think that kings and emperors were sending uh, their, their armies to kill or convert, you've got to look at religion uh, as responsibility for the kings themselves having the right to do that because it's always the bishop or the clergy who is placing the crown on the head of the king, defining uh, the king as an emissary or representative on earth of, of God and have giving, giving him the right to rule over men coming directly from religion. Yeah, there's a, a kind of thing that happens in much of the world that we're a little blind to, and that is that often they have struck on their coinage the face of the living uh, you know, king or queen. Um, you know, and that was done in antiquity too. You know, when Caesar was emperor in in Rome, there would have been coins stuck struck with Caesar. Um, uh, whereas we have usually the portraits of dead presidents uh, on our coinage, and they stay in circulation for a long time. Uh, we have here a picture of a uh, Canadian coin, and it it has some markings on it. When I, you know, we get Canadian coins in circulation mm -hmm. down here, and years ago I noticed this. D.G. Regina, and I figured it's Latin, it's got to be, and Regina sure sounds like regent or someone in power, yeah. and, and it turns out what it means is, you know, uh, queen by the grace of God. Right. So r right there, in a sense, their coins are claiming uh, that it divine is still divine right, right to rule. To rule over other men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, continuing on. Um, we have the condemnation of certain people as witches in uh, the witch trials in Europe and Asia, I mean, sorry, America. Uh, it's the Bible that says that witches uh, shall, that it, they exist and they shall not be suffered to live. No, we have to kill them when we find them. Yeah, the, the exact phrase in the King James Version is, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Yeah. And, you know, there, there, there are, I, I think, potentially millions of, of people killed in Europe over this. Well, not only and not only that, but uh, the Christian callers or viewers may think, yeah, but that was in the past. We don't do that anymore. We all know witches don't exist. But that's not the case. It's going on right now in Northern Africa because it's been spread by Christian uh, missionaries. Uh, there are there are people over there that are condemning children as witches and driving them out of their villages. 
um, to be preyed upon by either men or or animals. Uh, and this is happening right now as we speak in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And of course, the basis is for that is the Bible. Um, moving along, the perpetuation of slavery. Uh, the Bible stories establish and promote slavery in many forms. Perhaps I could have a little reading sure. from the Bible. All right, this comes from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 44. Both of thy bondmen and thy bondmaid, which thou shall have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you, and of them ye shall buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule over one another with rigor. So, you know, I, I know that, um, you know, a, a lot of people will look at that Moses story in Exodus as saying, oh, well, God wanted to end slavery. Well, no, he's, you know, it's quite clear in the Bible, let my people go. Mm -hmm. the, the other people, he was fine with them being slavery, and he yeah. says so explicitly right. right here in Leviticus. Right, and if you, if, if the viewer is familiar with the Ten Commandments, the movie by Cecil B. DeMille, he ends the movie, the, the very last line in the movie is Moses pointing toward the promised land and telling his people to go and proclaim freedom throughout the land. That's a quote from the movie. Apparently the he Bible, didn't read the next chapter in, in the Bible. The, well, even in the Bible it didn't yeah. say that. It said basically go, take your land, kill everybody on it, and, and take, take ownership. Yeah, uh, the, well, it's the, the, the book that follows is Joshua, and it's all about how they began killing and displacing the existing inhabitants. Uh, you yeah. know, there's the story of, you know, God making the, the sun stand still. Well, what was that all about? It was so, so they could go on killing people, mm -hmm. uh, that they could finish killing that day. Mm -hmm. And they didn't just kill them, of course, they, they enslaved them. Um, that was just part of the warfare uh, that that God uh, in sanctioned in the Bible. Uh, what was it, the Mennonites? Uh, uh, in Numbers 31, you can read about how uh, uh, God says to Moses, avenge yourself on the Midianites. I might be mismangling the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Um, and Moses commands his army to uh, kill everyone. Now, the army rebel or disobeys, and they save the women and children. And Moses is wroth, and he says, what have you saved the children? Now therefore kill all the males that are amongst the little ones, and all the women that have known man by lying with him. But the, 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 the women that have not known man by lying with him, you may keep for yourselves they, as a possession. And they kept how many? Uh, it's 32,000. 32,000. So, so, so think imagine. about that. That means that approximately 32,000 little boys got the sword that, if, if, if it's to be believed. Well, it's not only that, but if you consider that um, of the total population, a certain percentage are, are little girls, and they're like 32,000, can imagine how many people they kill that day. Yeah. You know, uh, on the command of God, according to uh And, to you the know, Bible. I, I can't help but think that, that most of the Exodus story is, is, is mythological and or yeah. le barely legendary. Even if but, it is. But, but it's appalling that they would have enthusiasm for a story right. like that. Right. Even if it is, it, you've got to think about the morals that, are, that they're trying to purvey with that chapter and with most of the chapters in, in the Bible, uh, so, especially the Old Testament. So when we hear believers say, where do you get your morals from if not from God, we, 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 we want to turn that question yeah. around and say, have you, have you read the Jehovah's Book? Mm -hmm. Um, talking about cherry picking the Bible, which they have to use their own moral standards to get any kind of good morals out of the Bible. If they didn't, then they would be promoting killing uh, homosexuals, killing uh, uh, unruly children, um, and and war on non-believers. You know, they would have to do all of the stuff that the Bible itself says is moral. 
Uh, well. So what else is wrong with religion, Larry? Well, it tends to dehumanize other people. Uh, other people, I mean, other religions, believers, and non-believers like us, it dehumanizes them. We're not real people because we're not people of the book. We're not people of their in-group. Yeah, I can't help but think how, you know, when um, the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, you know, they just couldn't stand to leave those Buddha statues there carved in stone uh, because, you know, it bothered them. And so, you know, they had to blow up someone else's, you know, work of art. Um, you know, right. something that it, I, I, I'm sure those things were, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred years old um, from a time. Irreplaceable. And, and from a time when, um, you know, Buddhism had worked its way up into that part of the world. Right. Um, they say on the internet that if you bring up Hitler, you've lost the argument. <laughs> it's just that you, you've gone to an extreme. But uh, when you think of how Hitler and, and the Nazis dehumanized the Jews before they uh, finally subjugated, subjugated and started annihilating them, they called them pigs, they called them non-human, they called them... Uh, every name that you could think of that was d demeaning and dehumanizing. That is the first step to taking away a group's rights. Uh, if is they're to, not human, is to make them appear it's, other. It's okay to, to uh, deprive them of the human rights. So we have to always be on guard for that type of language. Um, you know, there was this um, hostage situation down in Australia that I guess it finished out somewhere yesterday. You know, the time zone difference between there and here always makes it confusing what day we're talking about. But I was, I was, uh, uh, gratified, let's say, to see how a, a woman had started a, a tweet, I guess it's called a hashtag, in response to watching uh, uh, a, a woman take off her burqa, because she was afraid, I think, to travel in public wearing a burqa, that she not, now might be a victim of violence. And she said to the woman, keep, you know, put it back on, I'll go with you to keep you safe. And she tweeted about that, and it's apparently spread as quite an important meme uh, right now happening in Australia. Mm. And I have to say, I admire that, and I think that stands up very well compared to our reaction after the 2001 right. attack here, where demonization was unfortunately, you know, allowed. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, the next one. Uh, subjugation of women. Throughout the Bible, uh, women are called unclean and are treated as property. Um, I've written some other stuff on this. It says Christians have passed laws based on the, Bi on the Bible passages which make women second-class citizens in their own country and attempt to limit their pr reproductive rights. So, heck, it was the 1920s before they even got the vote in America. The misogyny of the world's holy books teach it teach that women have half the value of men, should stay quiet, tend the home, and not seek careers for themselves. And it seems like the more the religions, more religious the country, the less rights that women have. Um, they teach that women provoke their own rapes, that's, which is really popular right now oh, in uh, yeah. the Middle East. That, 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 that's just amazing that, oh, men aren't responsible for this, it's the women brought it on. Yeah. Oh. And in some of these theocracies, they even stone the women who are raped. They stone them to death for the crime of adultery. So if you can imagine that uh, being raped and then being killed by your own family and friends uh, for being raped. Well, you know, here in Tennessee was recently passed a law that uh, the, the, the citizens of Tennessee voted to give the state legislature the power to legislate uh, women's reproductive uh, health choices and deny abortion, even in cases where it would save a woman's life. And mm -hmm. this is not a trivial thing. Um, you know, when I was in fourth grade, we started learning uh, some reproductive anatomy, and I loved saying the word fallopian tubes. <laughs> but fallopian tubes are the site where um, uh, pregnancies can occur outside uh, the uterus, and if, if that happens, it, it's, it, it can kill. Um, you know, it's a very, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, a developing embryo in the fallopian tube is never going to have, it's, it's not going to make it to full term. That, 
that embryo will never live to be an adult. And, and you know, they, our legislature has been, legislature in Tennessee has been given the right by the voters to say, no, nope, you can't even terminate that pregnancy. You just got to let it. They haven't done it yet, but it's coming. They've been given the right to create that kind of legislation. Right. Mm -hmm. They haven't written that legislation. That's what I'm saying the legislation. That legislation yeah. has not been created yet. We don't want to give the impression that it has at this point. But the, our, our legislatures have that power if, if they ever want to do that. Yep. Which is certainly in the realm of uh, reality. We're going to take a mid-program break. I guess we're at that point. Um, let's see. Are you, if you got a script for it, you better yeah. start and let me catch up. Okay. In case you're just turning in, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalist of East Tennessee. Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them and by individual contributions. Shows are live most every Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Community Access Television, Channel 6 or Channel 12, depending on your cable network. Tell your out-of-town friends to see us streaming online at ctvnox.org. All right, this is a call-in show, and we're live today, December 16th, 2014. And we'd like viewers to call in now on the number on your screen. And we will have our informative video. Okay. Take it away. If you live in or around the Knoxville area and are questioning your religious beliefs or simply believe in one less God than everyone else, well, you're not alone. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun and friendly group of people just like you that meets twice a week at a bar or restaurant. We meet every Tuesday night following the show at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria for happy hour. You'll find our group either inside or on the patio. Look for Richard Dawkins' silver-jacketed book, The God Delusion, standing upright on the table. On Fridays, we meet at Agave Azul or the Beard and Beer Market. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, provoke or punch, please don't. We all question what we believe at one point in our lives. If this is the time for you, come join us for food, drink, conversation, and fun. Do you find stories of talking snakes laughable? Do you prefer the scientific method over supernatural beliefs? Are you concerned about religious leaders and organizations imposing their values and rules on your body, your family, and the rest of our society? Well, take comfort in the fact that you're not alone. The Rationalists of East Tennessee meets weekly for fellowship and provides a forum for people who support skeptical thinking and rational discussion of these and other issues. To find out more information or to find out about our next meeting, visit us on the web at www.rationalist.org. And I guess we're back. Well, monthly, the Rationalists of East Tennessee have the Skeptics Book Club. The title of the January book is How Jesus Became God, The Exaltation of a Jewish Preacher from Galilee by Dr. Bart Ehrman. Uh, book Club is Sunday, January 11th at 2 p.m. at the Barnes & Noble Booksellers on Kingston Pike. The public is invited to participate. You need not have read the book to attend, but of course it helps. Um, the Barnes & Noble Bookstore is at 8026 Kingston Pike, and it's up in a little shopping center, uh, sort of to the, I guess that's the northwest side of Kingston Pike. Mm -hmm. Both the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee help provide a social outlet where you'll find that if you don't believe in God, you're, you're not, not alone. alone. Phone lines are open, the number's at the bottom of the screen. We welcome all callers. Yeah, we'd appreciate a call on what's wrong with religion anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you care to call in and, and object to some of the assertions we've made, that's okay too. Okay. Well, so we've talked about the subjugation of women um, and how that that interferes uh, with getting you know quality medical care, you know I thought that was something that would only be happening over there in the Middle East, yeah. uh, but here uh, it, it's coming back to America. Right, and even today women don't make the same wages as, as men, and you got to wonder how much of that is based on the Christian ethic of women not being worth as much uh, as men, or that the the man is the head of the household and therefore uh, needs to it, earn more than the woman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even today, for some religion, is responsible for uh, the refusal of parents to give medical treatment to their children, relying instead on prayers and faith healers. On this uh, this very show, we've had uh, Christian scientists call in and talk about, um, you know, the 
I guess it's a real problem within their community that they're taught that relying on secular medicine is is demonstrating a disbelief in in God. Mm -hmm. Especially with the recent Supreme Court uh, decision that allows a corporation, the religion or the corporate owners, to dictate your medical uh, choices. Yeah, I, that, that just strikes me as a, an utterly unreasoned decision when, when what amounts to, you know, the, the, uh, getting health care coverage in part of a group plan is an important part of making of, of how the markets are meant to work. And when you now say, well, we're not going to negotiate that part of it for you, that essentially means those individuals either cannot get coverage or have to somehow, if there exists, supplemental plans. Yeah. I don't actually know that there are supplemental plans. But the decision, I mean, it, it says basically that the corporation has more religious rights than their employees do. Yep. The, the corporation it trumps the right of the individual that works for them. Um, uh, well, it, it, it's amazing that that would be called freedom, that, you know, one person's decision would affect all the employee's decision, and that's called freedom. Uh, it doesn't match the definition in any, any book that I would keep. No. Um, since we're still talking about violence, uh, religion is responsible for the religion, the violence between Jews and Muslims in the Middle East, the decades of violence in Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland, uh, capital crimes against the doctors and women's health centers. Right um, here in America. And the 9-11 tragedy was definitely a true faith-based act. And a, and the war on terror is based on, of course, that. Unfortunately, it can be, yes. Um, you know, not to say that security concerns aren't real, but, you know, when we had a president who said that, you know, we're, we're on a crusade, mm -hmm. you know, he, he slipped into that mode. And, mm -hmm. you know, the recent report uh, by the Senate uh, investigation of the CIA's, um, uh, you know, uh, torture. torture in Guantanamo, you know, proves that out, that, that there are, are people who have been taught to dehumanize others to where they can do, you know, cruel and vicious things. And I, I read the summary of the report, and they talked about there were people who the, eventually the CIA even knew and understood, or at least some within the CIA knew and understood, that were just caught up in the sweep. They weren't really genuine suspects. Right. And they were still left there to be tortured for no reason other than we can't admit we're wrong. Mm -hmm. that, that's a terrible that's reason. Mm -hmm. We can't admit we're wrong because then we would look weak. Yeah, and of course there are people out there now that we're letting some of, the, some of those go saying that, uh, that Obama is just turning terrorists loose. We didn't have a right to hold them in the first place. Some of these people were just, like you said, caught up in the sweep. We don't have a right. We've never charged them with anything. And when we finally turned them loose after, what, decade of, of being held uh, illegally? Now, uh, again, it's, it's Obama's fault. Yep, yep. And of course, he wasn't in power when they were swept up and taken into. And but they don't want to think about And that. when due process was violated. Right. I think the, the violation of due process is the greatest crime in all of that. Well, I, I shouldn't say greatest. Yeah, the inhuman treatment is a greater crime, but it's the violation of due process that then enables that. You know, they, they sweep these people up and say, well, you know, we don't really know what's wrong, so we're going to have to torture them, get them to confess to something. Yeah, they might be guilty. You never know. Yeah, and, and with enough torture, we can get them to, con yeah. to, They'll say, yeah. to uh, confess to something. Mm -hmm. Well, this next section you have here is one that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and that is that religion is anti-knowledge. I'm a scientist by education, and I like to uh, parrot the phrase of Neil deGrasse Tyson when he says that when you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different. And the, the world of religion is a world of, of like marionettes that, you know, they're, they're just puppets that are being manipulated by, by some god for maybe very capricious reasons at times and, um, and and of course it's not true you know we the science has you know has let us understand you know not merely what we are living creatures how we got here descendant by variation from our ancestors it it tells us the story of how 
the Earth formed four and a half billion years ago, the Sun a little bit before that, and our galaxy 12 billion years ago. There's a marvelous story there, and it has the advantage of being true, and there's evidence uh, to show for it. Right. But if you've got a book that's full of answers and you're not allowed to question those answers, of course anything that science may come up with that contradicts those answers are immediately suspect. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, it's bad for scientific ad scientific advance, and it may actually be bad for the scientists. You know, it's something like 400 years ago, Galileo first looked through a telescope and said, you know, Venus is going around the sun. You know, the phases of the ve of Venus show that it's going around behind the sun. You, there's there's no question about it. And once you say Venus goes around the sun, then then that kind of settles the question. You know, prior to that, it was an open question. Well, there were there were certainly people who, who said no, the Earth probably goes around the sun, um, and it's the central body. Uh, but once Galileo saw those shadows of Venus and said no, Venus is going around the far side of the sun. That makes it, and you can look on the moon and see mountains, it makes it pretty obvious that that the Earth is a planet that's going around the sun, just like these other planets are going around the sun, just like these other bodies that have mountains on them. And of course the church couldn't stand that, couldn't have that, because it went against church doctrine. And they just finally got around to apologizing for imprisoning Galileo in, home, in his home. Yeah, well, John, John Paul, uh, I think, was the one who uh, made the apology on that. Around 2000, no, 1990? Uh, probably in the late 1990s, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, th th there's been an improvement within the Catholic Church. You know, the um, Johannes, who's here, will talk about his Catholic education mm -hmm. as being very rigorous with science, and that he said the the nuns would make a clear distinction when something contradicted the Bible and say, well, you know, that's not science, it's literature. I, he may not have used the word literature. Yeah. I forget exactly how he would express the fact that, right. that when, where, the, where they conflict, science wins. Right. But, um, religion teaches us also that the earth was put here um, to do with as we would, as we will. Uh, we can use it up or trash it. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't matter. Jesus is going to come back next week anyway. The phrase in Genesis is to give man dominion over it. Right. And, um, and so even Old Testament, it implies uh, it, d dominion is not respect. That's not what it is. And it's not, you know, respect for other living creatures. Um, and, and there, you know, a, a better thing would have been to admonish people to to remember it's finite and and it's not replaceable. Right. Um, not only that, but <clears throat> the whole <clears throat> dogma of religious, of Christian religiosity is that the earth is going to end, end shortly. Yep. It, it doesn't matter if we use it up, if we use up all the resources, or even if global warming takes over the planet. Um, according to their dogma, the earth is uh, going to end shortly anyway. Uh, Revelations tells us that uh, the, the world's coming to an end soon. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that, that makes it pretty hard on the rest of us who share this world and the finite resources. I'd like to look forward to a long future inhabiting this planet. Uh, some people say that one of the advantages or draws of Star Trek is the fact that it shows a future several hundred years in the future where there's basically no religion. Uh, of, uh, and it's a world of endless hope mm -hmm. for exploration and a better future. Right. And the world does not, nobody mentions, nobody talks about the coming into the world. Yeah. Well, Larry, I guess we got a call. Okay. Well, you're on the air now. Uh, may we have a name or a nickname, please? Yeah, my name is Doug. Hello, Hello Doug. Doug. Thanks for calling. Uh, do you have a question or a comment for us? Religion, anyway. Well, I don't see a whole lot wrong with it. There are a few things wrong with it, but, but you know, and that's just a, everybody's opinion. But uh, y'all seem to have a negative attitude towards Christians, but I don't think they have a negative attitude towards you. At least I don't. I'm a Christian, and I don't have a negative attitude towards you. Uh, my attitude is it's a free country and you can do what you want to. And we would love and I it. don't care if you're an atheist and you don't care if I'm a Christian, I don't think, but no. you seem to be attacking me. And I don't understand the reasoning why. I mean, it's all right to 
to do what you want to do because it's not against the law. Let me grab first. And before I got on, some gentleman said that if you didn't believe in the Supreme Being, you couldn't hold a public office in Tennessee. But I told him the actions of some office holders didn't act like they were uh, in line with what a God would want them to do. So they weren't at least paying too good of attention if they were, uh, if they did say they believed. So, you know, uh, you seem to be on the attack, and I wonder why. Well, sure, Doug. Attack. Let me let, let me grab that a little that? bit. Let, let me grab that a little bit. So you know, I, I am definitely on the attack against the Bible and its falsehood being treated on an equal par with scientific knowledge. You know, the Bible has a talking snake in the third chapter. Doug, do you really think there was a talking snake? Well, I have to believe that if I believe in eternal life. Okay, I and believe that there's a God and He exists. I have to believe what the Bible says. So, so you know, I mean, why don't you? A little far fetched. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But it could have happened. Well, Doug, Doug, you know, if... I mean, it, it, it's not that it could not have happened. Sure, Doug. Let me ask you a question. So it's about. Let, let's you know, dig. I've let's dig into in that, life, Doug. I truly believe God has touched my life, and, and I wouldn't deny that. Okay, but and I wouldn't deny Jesus, but I just wonder why that you think that we're against science, that we're against this, that, and everything else in the world. Well, we're really not. Okay, we'd like to I mean, answer some that. Maybe, we we, we want would, to answer that. Would you give us a second to answer that? Yeah. So, so Doug, I don't think there was a talking snake because I think science tells us that the reason we can talk is we got a big brain, and we've got uh, control of our breath, we've got a tongue, and the shape of our breathing weight lets us do all these things. Snakes don't have hey, any don't of that. Believe God, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, but I do. Yeah, so and uh, you probably don't believe Jesus ascended into heaven. Well, here, help me, Doug. Help God, me. But I do. Help me, Doug. That's fine, but I don't see why you want to attack us, and I'm not going to argue with well, you. Well, he help me, Doug. I guess that was the only reasoning I had. As your show seems to be geared towards attacking Christianity, not I believe that, that we are attacking you're, 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 you're falsehood. Take something away from someone. All right. Can we talk? Uh, can we take know, it? Can we say something the, now? The is on the attack, Excuse me, Doug. 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 And, and Larry wants to speak, and, Doug. Uh, I just wanted to get. You know, I just don't understand it. I'm going to hang out and let y'all go. But okay. Well, let, let let Larry hang on while Larry responds to you. Okay. Yeah. So that. Okay. Did you happen to hear any of the things that we were talking about earlier in the show? We've been on for. Yeah, I've watched it here for about. I guess 20 minutes or 30. Okay. You didn't hear any of the negative things that religion brought to the world? Well, the, you, you had some negative things. I mean, your, your question is what's wrong with religion. Okay. Anyway, Pe I don't people have, wrong people have beliefs and they act on those beliefs. If those re beliefs tell you that women are not worth as much as men, or if the. I don't, I don't think that's true. That says in the Bible is what we're I, talking I, about. I know that some of those things are women should be subject to your husband and that sort of thing, okay. but it's a partnership. and and that sort of thing. So you could pick it apart. I could pick you apart. You could pick me apart. And I don't want to do that. You know, I mean, anybody that with can... any intelligence at all can look, can have a debate. Well, Doug, I, I wanted want to debate. ask another I thing. I just you a simple question while you're on the attack. And I, sure. I, I, I Doug, Doug, will you ask, answer? I think you left. All right. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask Doug, so we'll ask the other viewers. If you have a magic being that can make a talking snake, is is that magic being also able to have made us this morning and that that childhood that we remember didn't really happen we were just made this morning is you know someone who can make a magic magic snake talk a, a talking snake could do that and if we have to say oh yeah that could have happened i think that changes the question then to when we look at the world around us and say well if it was made this morning um it sure looks like it, it had a past. You know, I remember a childhood. Um, when I look at my belly button, that's evidence of the fact that I once had a placenta. I don't remember my placenta. None of us remembers our own placenta. But we have a belly button that gives us evidence of the past. And when we look at the mountains around us, we see an evidence of the past that is also inconsistent with the Bible. We see fossils of sea creatures that no longer exist uh, in the mountains all around us. 
uh, there are layers of uh, volcanic ash that carry a radioactive signature that tells us uh, how long uh, since they were molten, that tells us that this happened hundreds of millions of years ago. All of that is incompatible with the story in the Bible. And, and so I think it's important that we say, the, recognize the Bible for what it is, and that is it is literature. It is something that people wrote, sometimes perhaps to entertain one another. Well, in, in fairness, we also have to say that that what we see in, in the history of the world around us is not only against what's, what's portrayed in the Bible, but it seems to be uh, against what's portrayed in any holy book of any religion, uh, which because uh, they don't seem to come anywhere close to the scientific evidence of the history of the earth. Um, yeah, so the Abrahamic books all stem from this tradition that's going to have the talking snake. So we can kind of set them aside and say, well, that was, that was myth. The Greek traditions um, are very anthropomorphic. You have this, um, you know, male and female sort of deities that are given rise to earth and air. The ancient Sumerians are kind of explicit about that. There was An and Ki who separated, and An is the sky and Ki is the earth, and An is male and Ki is female. Um, and that's, that's not even counting the hundreds of indigenous uh, populations who have their own mythology at the yeah. beginning of the universe. So uh, I think what we're, we're left with is, well, so. I've never heard of a religion that is compatible with the, the world around us, with the minor exception of uh, the Flying Spaghetti Monster, because it's explicit in their religion mm -hmm. that he, the deity um, messes with the measurements that scientists make. Um, and let's give uh, Buddhism um, its due, because the, the Dalai Lama recently said that wherever Buddhism uh, disagrees with science, then Buddhism will have to change because they, they realize that the science is, is a very effective it is tool. It's a, a to tool to truth. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, I think science is the place where bad ideas go to die. Because science is really good at figuring out what, when things are wrong. Mm -hmm. There is actually no mechanism to prove something true, really. Uh, there may be some places where right. we can. Uh, but what you can do is more often prove things are, are not true, and then you're left with things that are still plausible. Right. One thing that struck me about what Doug said was, I have to believe this if I want to live forever. And Doug, you don't have to believe it because what you're told in the book is just 2,000 year old preachers inventing sin to be able to keep you in line. Um, sin is, is something invented by the church so that they can sell you the cure. And the cure in, the, in Christianity is forgiveness. So if you, if you get forgiven for your sins, you can go to heaven and you don't have to go to hell. But there's never been any evidence that there's a soul, that there's heaven, that there's hell, there's any place for a soul to go after, it, after you die, or that it can t continues to live after we die. Um, it's, it's just uh, something you might want to look into before you um, dedicate your life to following this because you have to. Well, um, you, you, you talked about um, uh, having a soul there, and then you slipped into sentences that even implied, even if you accept that there's a soul, there's no proof right. of an afterlife. Mm -hmm. I, I'm fond of saying that, that, you know, even when I was born, I wasn't a person yet. It took some time, you know, f to, to learn to become a person. and. I'm pretty sure what that was is it was my brain developing. And when my brain ceases to have the organization that it does now, I'm gone and that's permanent. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't look forward to that, but I don't want to misspend the years or hours or minutes that I have. That we know we have. We don't know we have any kind of life after death, but we know we have this and we should take, make the best of it. All right, so um, to the extent that D Doug called, well, we're t trying to attack what I think of as some of the bad ideas of religion. 
uh, we asked what's wrong with religion and we've we've cited some things I think even Doug's admitted that yeah there were some bad things done in the name of religion maybe we have other callers that will, what, might want to call in and, and uh, address some of the things that Doug brought up we have a little bit less than 10 minutes so if you want to call please be quick about it okay well so I, I, we were talking about knowledge and I must admit that, you know, in the Bible, in the third chapter, this, the, it's the talking snake story. What did the talking snake do? The talking snake seduced our first mother, Eve, uh, into eating of the tree of knowledge and that that somehow caused the downfall mm -hmm. of humanity. Yeah. And, and I think it's just appalling that the whole idea of knowledge, now, and if knowledge means good and evil, it's even doubly ironic because how can you say that someone has been bad and or moral. sinned mm -hmm. if sin is a crime against uh, a, a deity if they didn't know what right and wrong was? It's, right. you know, it's a catch-22 mm -hmm. of the, the worst kind. We, call, we right. should call it catch Genesis 3. Right. Um, they, did, they didn't know the difference between right and wrong, so how did they know that disobeying God was wrong? I mean, they didn't have that knowledge yet. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and, you know, I, I bring up the talking snake because I think that if we say, well, you know, all right, there wasn't a talking snake, but then there's the whole question, why was there then a story about sin? And if there wasn't a sin, what's Jesus' role if it wasn't to atone yeah, for original this. sin? Mm -hmm. you know, the whole thing unravels the with the talking, the talking snake. snake. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so let's down. see. Um, I'd like to jump to uh, one of the problems of religion is that even today people will pray rather than seek legitimate medical attention for illnesses for themselves and their children. Uh, Christian science prayer practitioners are actually paid by insurance companies to pray for the recovery of the sick and infirm under their care as opposed to actually giving them even minimal medical treatment. Um, and if you take it, I'm sorry, we have a caller? We have a caller. Okay. Welcome to the show. You're on Free Thought Forum. May we have a name or a nickname? Uh, yeah, a caller would be fine. Hello, caller. Thank you for joining us again today. Yeah, I, I was uh, wanting to make a correction here uh, about the talking snake. Okay. Um, you were saying that snakes don't talk because they don't, they don't have the right tongue and so forth and so on the brain, voice, brain and all that. voice box and, yeah, and all that yeah yeah that that's 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 wrong really you well, do you, you, do know, you know many you got, talking snakes you caller got birds you got birds that talk right? yeah well they, they they've got a voice box that lets them do something like that um, okay yeah. now uh, well that's but well, no snakes don't talk but you you've just got the wrong reason uh, I, I believe well, I also mentioned the big brain and, right. and so on. The, day, the, the snake did not talk like a rat, like a parrot talks. He was actually coercing and, and using conversing. Uh, he was yeah, coercing. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a disagreeing that snakes don't talk. I'm just saying that those are the wrong reasons. The reason snakes don't talk is because all snakes are deaf. <laughs> oh. And why, you know, it, it, could, a st snake couldn't possibly hold a conversation if they're deaf, it's and true. and they can't do hand language. Why? Because <laughs> snakes don't have hands. Now, right. yeah. Now, now you're this this atheism. What is wrong with religion? Is kind of a set up question here. I think you should be taking on the more challenging question. What is that? that? Is what's right with religion? What's good about religion, what's useful about religion. Okay. And, now, and one of the things that's useful about religion is to allow people to believe stupid things. <laughs> now, it is impossible for me to believe that, that one, 1 plus 5 in base 10 is anything other than 6. But if I, if I use religion, I can say one, you know, 1 equals 3. You know, with the Trinity and all of that. So, <laughs> so I believe y'all are, are, you know, you're just... You well, know, caller, you're, I have to... You just took an easy topic. I, 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 I have to wedge in there and say, well, why is that useful? And useful to who? Useful to who? Only if you plan on taking advantage of someone, it would appear to me. Do you, well, of caller, course. Yeah. caller, do you plan on taking advantage of someone? I, 
now, 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 Forrest, <clears throat> you know from the Egyptians, they used religion to control people. You know that Napoleon said that religion is nothing more than politically expedient. You know that Hitler used the Catholic Church in order to gain power. You know that the Republicans, which are in good company there, uh, are using Fox News, I mean, in order to control the voting population. And religion. Yeah. Well, yeah, and plus, you know, you got Bill O'Reilly saying that uh, the archangel told him what title to, to do his a book, Killing Jesus. The, the I didn't know that. came from an angel. No, what? I knew. Are, are you sure about that, caller? I, I heard. Um, well, the only reason I could be sure about it is because I heard it from his own lips. <laughs> now, if I read it on some blog somewhere, I might be, no, 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 Bill O'Reilly in an interview on TV said an archangel, an angel came, I'm, he says, I'm Catholic and I believe that angels do things, and he said an angel told him to title his book Killing Jesus, which I thought was a little redundant since he already did the other killing books. Mm -hmm. But religion is, 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 is an easy way to control people. I mean, you make them fear death or fear sin or fear punishment. Now, caller, I have to object because you said what is good about it, and I won't label that good, and I won't let it stand. I got to well, call that not good. I don't know. Controlling a big bunch of people is a pretty powerful thing. I it's, mean, it is um, powerful, but is it good? Is it the thing to, to start yeah. with? Well, so now we're getting down to morality, yeah. and so then we'd have to ask you where your morality comes from, and it obviously did not come from Jesus. From so. human empathy and compassion. Yeah. Um, I enjoy talking to people too much to want to be manipulative. Well, it's uh, still, if you're going to control a population, what you want to do is you want to cut the population up into segments. You want to take the, uh, the, the segment, let's say the 10% that's gay, you want to demonize them. You want to take the 10% that has other differences, you want to demonize them. And then of what's left over, let's say the females, you want to keep them under your control. So you only have to work about 20% or maybe 40% of the population in order to control the whole population. So if I want to be stupid and lazy and get along with, the, uh, with whatever people are controlling the government, this religion is the way to go. So you're saying it's a tool for the powerful. All right. Well, you're not the first to make that observation, you know. No one says wrong. Either. Yeah. So, caller, uh, we'll give you 30 more seconds, then we're going to have to say goodbye so we can do our closing. Uh, 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 any, anything else? Quick, 30 seconds. Uh, let me see. If I want to be an expert on something like creationism, you know, the forming of the world, all I have to do is read the Bible. I don't actually have to study. Religion <laughs> is the lazy man's science. Lazy man science. All right. Well, we'll I'll agree with you on that one as well. Caller, well, thank you. For th calling. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I, I Hope assume you'll come it, down to. Yeah, if you're local, come down to Barley's. We'll see you there. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. All righty. Well, the, the hour is nearly gone. Mm -hmm. You better start. I'm catching up again. It's time to start wrapping things up. Get out your pen and paper. This has been Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I'm Larry Rhodes. And I'm Faithless Forrest. Please send us feedback. Leave voicemail at 865-272-9060 or email us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. You can see this show on Tuesdays from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time on this Knoxville station and at 2100 Greenwich Mean Time on ctvnox.org. We would like to thank our viewers and send our thanks to Sam and Jonas for technical support and the staff at CTV KNOX and to all of our callers. Nuns who those who identify with no religion are the fastest growing religious group in America. Right here in East Tennessee, the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee are places where you can find fellowship and fun. Remember, you are not alone. alone.